All right, Isaiah 11, let's call this relatively famous Messianic scripture or a passage that seems to foreshadow the appearance of the Christ. Let's entitle it The Branch coming out of verse one, specifically where it says, there shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse and a branch from his root shall bear fruit. Understanding that this chapter seems to organize itself in three sections. The first talking about his character, roughly going from verses one through five as verses six through roughly about nine. We'll talk about his influence or the influence of his character as the final section, at least as I saw it, verses 10 going on through the end of the chapter, verse 16, seem to talk about the ways in which beyond the immediate effect of his influence, there is a healing that will linger or last long beyond his immediate influence. But starting with that first section where it seems to describe his character, it is going to seem to be a vivid description of his character. One, that I'm not going to insult with the summary, but uh, as much as any passage, this one really deserves your time and attention to understand the things that the Christ is about. Understanding that in any company, if you're gonna have a healthy fit, you need to be about the same things as the organization. And likewise, in ministry or in Christ, it's so important that once you believe that he actually is, and he is actually a source of not only healing, but of wisdom, counsel, and much more, then you'll begin to understand the ways in which his character produces certain outcomes. Thus, the second portion of this chapter, which talks about his influence and the sobering reality of being a Christian or being a disciple is that we have the freedom to do whatever we want, but we also have the responsibility of understanding that our own path often, if not always, produces outcomes that are very different than the outcomes produced by his character and his ways. Thus, the vivid description of his influence in the next set of verses, as we mentioned, verses six through nine, where he is going to talk about once again, his influence specifically through the level of reconciliation that his ways produce. Verse six, famously saying, the wolf shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat and the calf and the lion and the fattened calf together and a little child shall lead them. Understanding that his influence is designed to produce more than just a moment of reconciliation. Verses 10 through the rest of the chapter are going to talk about the ways in which his reconciliation has the potential of bringing healing. Verse 10 to the nations, but in verses 11 through the end of the chapter, to Israel's remnant so that they are no longer fighting one another, but they're unified in a legitimate purpose, beginning to fight against those who are actually committed to doing wrong. Beginning specifically in verse 13, it will say, the jealousy of Ephraim shall depart and those who harass Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not be jealous of Judah and Judah shall not harass Ephraim. But they shall swoop down on the shoulder of the Philistines in the west, and together they shall plunder the people of the east. They shall put out their hand against Edom and Moab, and the Ammonites shall obey them. Understanding that we can be unified, because unity has a certain level of joy or euphoria that goes along with it, but that euphoria can be short-lived if we are not unified in a healthy purpose. And so what God is saying is in understanding the fact that his Christ has the potential to not only unify the nations, but the people of Israel, it's not simply Israel being unified against anybody who's not Israel. It's Israel unified against those who are committed to doing wrong, leaving an example for us as modern day Christians or disciples of Christ to understand that in the life of Paul, insofar as he was unified in a unhealthy purpose, being a Pharisee who once persecuted Christians, he had to pay the price for being unified for the wrong reasons. God comforting those he once hunted by saying he will now see how much he must suffer for my sake. And so as we look at this chapter, Isaiah chapter 11, that seems to show us so much about Christ, his character, his influence, and the healing it all brings, as we sometimes say, my prayer for you is my prayer for me that God help us to diligently seek his intervention to help us be unified for the right reasons.